はい<笑> I tried to get stuff set up with my other laptop but didn't get it to work so this is me in a state of panic <laughs> how's everyone doing I have two microphones set up so I can kind of do this so what I'm doing right now before I start is just freezing everything Not too many tracks on this one, almost a hundred, and some of them are doing almost nothing. So I'd say it's probably one of the simpler ones I've done in a while. I'm trying to find the really bad track. There's one that's um, gives me a lot of grief. Let me put on these headphones so I can hear myself better. Because my real life voice <laughs> isn't loud enough to hear through my ears. <laughs> All right. My computer could handle this if I wasn't also <laughs> capturing my screen and combining it with my webcam and <laughs> yeah there's one that I'm really looking for that's like not great let's see how it's doing so far okay that's a bit high for me 60 <laughs> it'll probably work but at some point my laptop's gonna get a bit too hot and stop cooperating I could also just delete instruments <laughs> but I don't know if I want to do that just yet all right let's freeze the bass track okay it won't let me Okay, screw it. <laughs> I went back and listened to that sometimes because, yeah, the weird thing about that song. Thank you, Jolly Pod. Okay, let's just see how this goes. I'm a bit worried, but I can't find the major ones that I'm scared about. Maybe these two. Let's freeze these two and then we'll, and then I think we'll be good. Monitor is set to in. Okay, I don't need to have it set to in. Okay, that was fast. Hmm, why is there nothing on there? Oh, it's because I'm using it. Okay, I got it. I got it. Let's put this MIDI track on both of these and then freeze them. <laughs> In the meantime, we can let a couple more people join. How many people haven't heard the song? <laughs> Maybe I should post the link. I mean, it's all right if you didn't hear it, but I probably be, <laughs> probably won't be playing it start to finish before I show each track. That's okay. Maybe it's better. Maybe it's like watching the movie before the book. 
I definitely get a lot more listeners on Spotify now. SoundCloud pretty much died on me. <laughs> and I think everyone else. Maybe if you're making a very specific type of music, it still works, but... I find that SoundCloud's about as responsive now as when I was just getting started, basically. Okay, I'm glad that people like this song. I definitely wanted to do a vocal song that wasn't a pop song. Okay, this looks better. Let's give this a shot. I think people just like Spotify better, so they stopped using SoundCloud. All right, let me show, let me start with the first thing that I did, actually. I wonder if I have it. Okay, here's how I started the song. Basically, lately I've been starting a lot of songs from the piano and just importing the voice memo in, and it's like so much easier than trying to record in what I was playing upstairs. <laughs> And the cool thing about this recording is I hadn't really figured out what the idea was. And so by the end of the recording, I figured out the song. But at the beginning, it's just kind of like the start of the idea. Let me drag this forward so it's not playing everything underneath it. By the middle, I figure out the melody. It's cool that like the song doesn't exist at the beginning of the recording and does at the end. So I imported that and just started adding stuff on top. And I have the first version here. You can hear that, right? Yeah. I almost like this demo better than what the song turned out to be. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Yeah. The cool thing is I had this idea and this was the first song I decided just to make a full length demo. So. I'd never done that before. I'd always like have the idea and just start adding seconds to it. But for this one, I was like, I'm going to make the whole song, even if it's terrible, and then I'll fix it after that. And this is the first time I did it, and it works so well for me. So I made this in a day, basically. And the cool thing is it's like 85% or maybe more that the song turned out. Uh, 
Um, I think I was accidentally recording this. But it's me and Hikari, I think, in the kitchen. Get it right this time. Oh, no, we were we were recording. Um, I had two microphones. No, I had two iPhones set up, and I was um, recording plastic bags over the iPhones. Um, and then <laughs> I think I was just screwing around during that. Yeah, I'm singing Winter Speak here. I changed it to Winter Sleep afterwards. <laughs> I just thought this was hilarious. Anyways, yeah, and then I made this using the. I mean, I'm sure some people caught it. Um, I have the stems for. Here we go. I don't know if I have the. Hmm. Oh, here we go. So it's the multi-track recording for that Coldplay song. <laughs> and I knew I just wanted the exact beat. So originally I had just this set of stems put into the track. Yeah, so at first I just sampled that. And it sounds really bad. <laughs> like it sounds like the drum track got sped up. But I really like this was like the version I kept going back to to get it to sound more like it because I love how loud the the guitar sound is. Reminds me of um, like a Ben Howard song. Anyway, so yeah, those are the original ideas. And then it turned into something pretty polished. Maybe it's worse. All right, let me, let me show you my favorite part first, which is what you just heard, but I re-recorded everything. So the way I did this was I don't have a lot of microphones, so I had to use um, like a vocal mic. I didn't have these mics at the time, so I had a vocal mic and two iPhones. And I recorded each drum individually and then brought it out of my room and brought the next one in. So that's part, here's the vocal mic. And here are the two iPhones. And same with the, the ride is I think entirely iPhone. So I put two, I put one iPhone in the top corner of the room and the other iPhone in the other top corner. <laughs> and then I have to like email the files to my computer. <laughs> I started working on this, let me see, I think it was definitely summertime, which is funny. All right, <laughs> crazy. Okay, almost, well, over a year ago. That's kind of a scary thought. In fact, it's terrifying. I don't like to think about that. That's so weird, it took more than a year. Well, I had it, I actually, had the idea on my computer in the early version like this for uh, what I don't know two months before I really started working on it and then I just decided to come back to it and I think I did it in two weeks which was really fast for me and since then I've been doing stuff that fast but I'd say it's because I decided to make the whole demo. It's insane that I got this drum track to sound this good with iPhones and that stupid mic. 
anyway okay moving on let's start with the most important part oh this is a cool trick too i like markers but i think it's fun to do midi blocks for your song structure all right so here's the piano this is just my piano upstairs and two iphones actually I knew I wanted to finish it since the demo I made. I just didn't have the, I don't know, it was like too painful to try and make a song. Almost like, I don't know what it is. Like, I feel like I'm not scared to make something bad, but that seems to be the only explanation. When I have a good idea and I'm too afraid to work on it, as if like, there's a right time to work on it where I'll actually make a good song and a wrong time where if I work on the idea, I'll just <laughs> make something that's like a tenth of as good as its potential. So this is, yeah, same setup. I'm glad I have these two mics now because it would have been a lot easier. So this is like an SM58 and this is two iPhones. And as long as you EQ it, two iPhones sound pretty good. It's just a lot of noise. So on top of the piano is this. This is just a sound that I made. Um, I fixed like a um, default contact library to make it sound better by adding release notes to it. And then this is just, yeah, I didn't make this one at all. This is, I think, Sony, like a Sony string pack, solo strings. But together, it sounds like a quora, which is what I wanted. is African string instrument. It's pretty much like a harp, but it sounds better <laughs> and doesn't look like a harp. But it sounds pretty close to a harp, I'd say, but more attack. So on top of that, I have, what will be next? So this is pretty much the bass and the verse. Yeah, it is Hikari's voice in the song. So I'll add a couple samples that I like now. This is, I know where it's from. <laughs> this is the intro to a who was it trumpet player <laughs> miles davis it's just such a crazy sound um i changed the eq i think there's like double bass There's such a weird sound. Sweet. All right, so that goes underneath the whole song. I mean, <laughs> Beginning. I, mean, I can't lie if I'm like, have the project file open. And then I'll keep adding samples. I think that's a cool way to do this. Here's, um, I found, it was like um, a school band covering a Bonnie Bear song and all their trombones are out of tune and it's hilarious and it sounds so good. <laughs> it's just, they're not in tune, but I like it better. 
All right, so let's add all three of these together. Oh, those are, yeah, those are gonna go. These are a couple of like um, pitched endings of Siguro songs. <laughs> That's all for samples in this part. So I'll start to add all the other stuff in. I basically choose samples at random. Yeah, and then it'll just end up working. It's kind of weird. I feel like maybe either a lot of things work or there's some kind of weird. <laughs> maybe I only remember when it works, but I'll do this thing where like I know I need a sound and I'll just go in and like pick something random and it'll just work. It'll be in key even. I think it has something to do with the fact that I forget when it doesn't work. <laughs> All right, here is, um, these are cello recordings from the uh oh live version that we did. So before we filmed the video, we recorded more strings so that we could layer it in. So I have a ton of multi-track recordings of cellos and violins and violas. So this track works with this bass. This is just a, um, I think, free sound recording of a brush snare, and I just chopped it up so it sounds real. Here, I'll solo that. It doesn't sound so good soloed. I think I recorded this with iPhones and it's not a snare drum. I think it's like my hand on a pillow or something. This ride cymbal is from um, a YouTube demo where they just demo the ride cymbal that they're trying to sell and you can pull out like four ride notes from the video and use that. And the fun thing is you can basically shop for a ride cymbal online and never have to buy it to have it in your song. <laughs> so this ride also came from um, Tessa's recording in the video. And the drummer that we had there as well was playing, he brought his own like weird percussion instruments. And so all the <coughs> sounds are his setup. And I just use that and then use some like noise removal to get rid of all the strings with the string demo or the ride demo. I love this symbol sample. So deep and interesting. <laughs> So that's basically everything except for the vocals that I showed. Winter. I recorded this um, using like a what did, I just used my um, 58 that I left in China. Winter sleep. And I left the speakers on while I was recording, and my goal was just to have something like imperfect and use that instead of trying to get the perfect vocal track. Winter sleep. Winter sleep. Now is not the time to live an honest life. Winter. So the way I sang this, it's it's interestingly hard to tell, but I basically sang as quiet as I could, um, which is not easy to do somehow. Like you have to like hold back your throat and really sing quiet, and. Then when you turn it up, it sounds really good somehow. Winter sleep. There's a lot of compression on it. Um, I froze the track so that my computer doesn't melt. But winter, winter sleep. I found that if I tried to sing any louder than that, it just didn't sound good anymore in the song. Oh, we sing along. 
yeah and i just kind of tried to sing like i didn't know how to sing very well <laughs> say that i feel just like the song but it won't work this time i kind of like the like indie movie um especially with my girlfriend singing along it has this like really like juno feeling to it or something <laughs> but it won't work this time it won't work this time okay um question about the glitchy stuff so i just have a flanger or flanger i don't know somebody can tell me with um phonetic <laughs> but it's basically on like a hundred percent feedback and So I'll turn the mix all the way up. And then you can change the pre-delay to get different pitches. There we go. So if I wanted to bring out a certain note, I'd just find it there and maybe have to like type it in to get the right note. And then if I want winter over that vocal, I can go like. Winter sleep. Winter sleep. Now is not the time. Thanks for the subscription. Jare dice. Anyway, yeah. This is one of those things where like, while you're doing it to the track, you're like, it sounds good, but I probably won't do it. And then I ended up just sticking with it. Whenever I put effects on the master, like I'll do things like put, it's one of my favorite things to do and it never ends up making it into the final track because I just feel too weird about it. Let's see. I think it's in the wrong ear. Everyone tell me what ear this is in. I think it should be. <laughs> okay, it's backwards. Maybe I should fix that. Give me a second. It's so annoying. I have like a RCA cable and the colors are backwards. So you have to put the red one into the white <laughs> input and the red one into the white one into the red input. <laughs> okay, there we go. Yeah, I like this um, effect. I'll basically have the song playing normally and then have it like pan all the way to the right in like an empty space a foot away from your ear. <laughs> and then like bring it back. But I never do that. I always delete it before I bounce the track out. Hello, your man Japan. Alright, so here's the pre-chorus. Um, there's a lot more samples in here that I like. This is... Who's this by? I wish I knew. I think it's Chopin. But it might be this weird Russian... No, Chopin, 1955, unless that's the recording date. I don't think it's Chopin. Okay, it's this guy. I wonder if anyone's heard of him. He seems not to be too like prolific, <laughs> but he did a lot of... I mean, he's prolific in his output, but not in his recognition. Anyway, so I think this is just a straight sample from it. Might have been... No, 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 it's not. I rendered this out. So these are like different chords, I think, each time. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> the flanger? <laughs> Here's another recording from the same composer. 
So these might not have been rendered, so I can probably drag these out and you can hear what the stuff around it sounds like. Basically, these recordings are all really discordant, and I basically search for the <laughs> nice chord that he was kind enough to put in. And then I got one there. So these are all from different recordings. And let's go along with this and this sample. Out of pitch trumpets or trombones. samples this is from I don't think it's Emojin Heat it's um it was like a copycat artist <laughs> and I just found some cool notes and reversed them anyways yes yeah, I find it so much fun to steal other people's stuff and put them on top of each other <laughs> we sing along say that I feel like so these toms I recorded in the bedroom too. I feel like this is probably one of the reasons why my CPU is dying. This is another iPhone recording. <laughs> I originally had, um, I was borrowing my friend's Juno and I think I wanted to use the sound, but I didn't have it anymore. So I just downloaded the um, plugin version of it and made the same patch. we got here <laughs> so I somehow like this sounds like an idea that I couldn't have possibly come up with I like it more than anything that I usually make it sounds bad solo just you know <laughs> but sent to it. Let's see. Looks like nothing. Maybe in the outro. I can't even figure out. It's pitching it down an octave. Sometimes I just get lazy and do it like that with a grain delay. be this one I have no idea where it's coming from not knowing where it's coming from is making it more creepy okay it's this one there might be a couple more other tracks but okay 
I really like the iPhone microphone actually, but you need to. If you're just using one, it doesn't sound good. Um, there's this app, a free app called, I forget what it's called. It's called, it's made by Rode and basically you can record on your iPhone in wave and then, um, it shows you a IP address and you enter it on your computer and you can just download it off of the website. It's all like, um, client side FTP or something. Okay. So <laughs> where are we? Oh yeah. The bottom melody. These are samples. <laughs> Everyone com comments on my EQ curves. I don't know what happens. I think it's just from going back and back and back and trying to like fix things. But yeah, I pretty much always run out of um, EQ handles. I really like this hi-hat. It's from an emulation of a modular synth from like 1960s 60s or something. I don't actually know. If you know about synths, you probably know a lot more than me. Um, there's some really bad stuff that sounds good in the track, like my backup vocals here. <laughs> Basically works with these trombone samples. Pretty embarrassing. It's kind of like the Lord of the Rings <laughs> thing. of it. So here's the build up section. Here's the main sample I think in the ending. It's all reversed samples from the same song. I guess I could pull up the original. I reverse this, is it gonna re-render it? Maybe. Okay, this has all my effects on it still. Basically this works with any song. <laughs> with this, if it's just like cool vocals and piano. So stuff like that, I take, reverse it, which makes it sound like really creepy Clams Casino. Actually very Clams Casino. I found out about this just trying to copy Clams Casino. So then on top of that, there's erosion and some high passes and stuff. and the Clams Casino delay. And then that sample got repitched. I think it's just normal delay. I think it might be a filter delay actually. Let me see. Um, it's a plugin that I have, but yeah, it's essentially just filtering. And it has a slight difference in the delays between channels, so it's more stereo. So just taking little different parts of that song, I made the, <clears throat> the sound here. Um, 
Um, I really like avant-garde recordings where there's almost no point of it existing except for sampling. <laughs> like there's this track, it's like 20 minutes long and it's just noise. But it's such a good noise. I mean, they must have put some time into it. But maybe somebody else can tell me why this exists. <laughs> Anyways, I use that underneath the, the song and it, <coughs> it actually elevates the energy like times three. <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll turn it on and off and you can hear the difference. Or maybe you can't. Let's go to the ending here. Yeah, this is off. And this is on. Basically just makes it sound like the bass is distorted. But a really cool impossible distortion. But without it, it doesn't sound, especially like without this sound, I can't do this many courses in a row. I can maybe do like one before it just starts to feel really monotonous. All right, so this stuff gets filtered at the beginning. I really like this sound. This is a Seagrow song, but I think it's pitched down a lot, yeah. And then distorted like crazy. iPhone recorded piano chords. And then from the recording that I did of these toms, I already like, <laughs> fixed the tuning of the tom and took it out of my room so I couldn't bring it back in easily and record it so I just put the original sample that I recorded onto a sampler or a simpler <laughs> and then triggered them like this which was actually a lot better because I could control the accents which seemed really it was really weird programming the accents. So like dum 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 like little tiny meaningless poems. And then this is a cool track because my girlfriend was like, it needs something. Like wind trees and the trees are breaking or something. And then I basically found that exact sample and put it in there and it fixed everything. So here's without that tree breaking wind sample. Super boring. And then here's with it. The storm is coming. <laughs> it just sounds so lame without it. I can do a better impression of her, but I don't want to do it too close because it'll be like, it'll be kind of weird. All right, so moving on. <laughs> I love this track. I think it's this one. All right, so I can't play guitar at all. <clears throat> so if I want to record guitar, I have to like put it on my lap, spend like, you know, 30 seconds getting every string to the right note that I want it and then like holding this weird impossible chord and I even use like a capo to hold some strings if it's too far away but eventually I get the chord that I want and I just stay still and record it and then stop recording and do the next chord and that's how I did this guitar part.
And I'm sure like if you stretch out any of these, I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. How did I know it? I was suffering so bad. Fuck yeah. Oh no, I said fuck yeah. Okay, that's different. <laughs> I guess it was like, I finally got it. <laughs> I've honestly, I've never, I have, I have no memory of checking and seeing if that's there. I just had a feeling it was there. I'm scared to, to play the ends of all of these. I actually terrified. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, it was hard. It was hard to do. Clock and spiel. I think that's pretty much it. I'll I'm gonna go through and check and make sure that there's not some cool secret tracks that I'm forgetting. There's this one, which is I think this is from the original recording that started the whole song. And I just stretched it out and put reverb on it and used it. So I think it's pitched up too, and that's my voice singing. I was just kind of like making up some stuff, but I ended up using it in the end of the song somehow. I got the cello, axle distort. <laughs> We covered those ones. This is the bass. This is a mini Moog copy. But such a powerful bass sound. I don't know how it works, but I way rather use this than like massive or something for basses like that. Guitar. Piano, vocals, more vocals. Oh, there's this track here. I just used a tape delay um, plugin, but you can make like really easily make Radiohead esque sounds. Pretty cool. I don't usually have any stylistic reason to use that effect except for this song, so it was fun. Here's some more backup vocals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, what else do we have? This is just a bad horn sound that I need to use. Chords. Here's one chord from Apex Twin Song. And I just wanted to put that in there to get that major seventh. Yeah. Okay. We covered that. This is just another iPhone recording. Oh, actually, this one's different. I think I put, I put um, scotch tape on all the piano keys, which is harder than it sounds because it buzzes if it's not on right, and like different strings needed more tape and stuff. <laughs> but it has this cool, like, really weird attack, um, attack sound. This sounds good at the end. All the notes have this like, oh, I can't play it now, but all the notes have this like um, pitch bend if you have aftertouch on your MIDI controller. 
So I didn't realize it, but that's why it sounds good. All the notes get detuned because I'm playing so hard. All right, there's gotta be a couple more things. Oh yeah, the flute sample. This is like um, classical Indian music. I didn't end up turning it up very much. It just almost sounds like harmonics in the song. You can hear. Yeah, okay. Almost at the end here. Then I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> Which is good because my laptop seems to be finally... Mm. All right, that's the whole song. Um, if you guys have any questions about certain parts of the song that you want to see, do let me know. But I think I covered almost the whole thing. So, what sound scared you? <laughs> Um, the contact library is, well, originally, here, I'll, I'll turn off the freeze on it. There we go. Um, it's from the factory library. I think it's not actually out of key. One second. So the original Cora that comes with it doesn't sound like this. Um, let's see here. World strings. Okay. So. Here's the original. And then they had two options. And you can't control the decay time on this one. So I just mix them together. So it plays the other one when you release the note. And then there's a bunch of other stuff like this um, room reverb makes it sound a lot better. It's weird. It's almost like it's doing more than reverb. But it puts it into a space and then that with the really expensive um, pizzicato library, it sounds great together. What's wrong with this? Good evening. Hmm. Did I flatten it? Yes. So together, like this sounds amazing. I use it a lot. And together they sound like a Cora. I found this really amazing um, uh, 
two musicians, one from somewhere in Africa and the other person was from France somewhere. I don't know where each <laughs> were actually specifically from, but um, one guy plays a um, cello and one guy plays a kora and it sounds so good, these recordings. I put them on the um, Spotify playlist for Tennyson. You can probably find them if you search around, but I love it so much. So that's how I decided to try and get the sound on my computer. Um, I'm thinking about fixing people's projects on the stream. I think it would be cool to have like people just send in stems so that they'll open properly, but maybe I'll spend like 10 minutes mixing as fast as I can and just do like keep on opening submissions over and over again and just mix them all <laughs> or like see if I can make them sound better in 10 minutes. I think that'd be cool and useful for other people. How does the project sound like so far? Oh, well, the song's out. <laughs> so it's called Winter Sleep and you can listen on Spotify. So yeah, I'm just showing all the tracks. There goes my sound card. All right, I'm going to close this one and... How long have I been doing this? Not very long, like an hour. Oh damn, you have a question. <laughs> <laughs> no. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> maybe I can answer it just from a recording. I wasn't listening to John Mayer earlier. <laughs> okay. There's this really embarrassing thing that I have. I have a bunch of like embarrassing versions of the song actually, but I'm not playing winter rap. <laughs> it's just not happening. <laughs> Maybe I'll send it to the uh, Twitch subscribers on the Discord. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see this one. I'll probably play. Okay, horns at 58 seconds. Oh, I already went through that. <laughs> You'll have to go to the VOD. I also have a really embarrassing... I think I can... Can I share the one of you? She can't hear me until the stream reaches her ears. Oh, you know the version I have of you? No, I don't know. I think it's okay. okay. It's basically just a bunch of tracks solo. The flute and the drums, but everything else muted, except for <laughs> my girlfriend's voice. Oh yeah, sorry. It's because I'm playing out of FUBAR. Give me a second. I gotta mute the desktop audio. <laughs> I look back at her and her face is like scrunched up in disgust at her own voice. <laughs> Oh, you can't hear me. I don't know how that happened. Hi. <laughs> I don't remember muting myself, but that's what happened. 
All right. Well, that's the end of me showing you winter sleep, but I could stream for another hour and do something else because why not? There's no point ending now. <laughs> that's true. I could play a game, except I don't play games. <laughs> Okay, yeah, if you guys have any questions, I feel like you guys have run out of questions by now, but if you do have any, send them over. Drum racks. I just don't use them. I just never... I use them on the live show. But even on the live show, I don't really like drum rack. I'd rather use an instrument rack because it does the same thing. You could even do like, like for some of the, like for my drum pad, I just put all my samples on here and map them to like this. And for the most part, I don't need separate releases for them or plugins. So drum rack is cool if you want to put effects on I don't know why it would be cool. I just don't like it. Maybe if you're... No, I don't know. I don't really see the point in it. I use it for live because I can put samples on it. But that's it. Yeah, if you want to swap samples, it's hard, but I usually never get there. I don't think I'd like program the whole kick drum track and then want to change it after. Um, for mastering, I just use Isotope. I think I have the newest one. And I just use the limiter that they have. Like um, something like this. And with this on, and dither. I tried FL Studio back when I was like 12, and it had the little dancing anime girl. That's all I really remember. Dither is sort of the same as when you dither in Photoshop. So when the signal's really quiet, I think it has to do with when the signal's really quiet. Um, you're basically dealing with like levels of, um, what would be the word? Like rasterization. Maybe that's the wrong word. It basically like adds a really quiet noise floor that interacts with the digital information, I think. I might be wrong, but... It's kind of like um, if you have a gradient in Photoshop, you can um, dither it so that you don't get banding. You can like take one color from one band and the other and um, use like noise scattering to blur the line, even though it's only two colors because the, the um, RGB value between the two bands is only one value off. So it's the same when it's when you're dealing with like really quiet levels in a song which honestly like i think it only applies for certain types of recording i don't think it's even really necessary i just put noise in my track all the time so there's not really a point where it goes from like where it reaches complete silence ever so i think it's only necessary in that point where it goes from signal to no signal and blurs that line a bit Ooh, actually, you might be right about changing to the lower bit rates. It's stupid me talking about something I don't know. <laughs> Favorite plugin? Um, Air Reverb. <laughs> I use it on every track. It's incredible. Yeah, that's. I keep saying that, but maybe I should put it in the.
Yeah, I've done a lot of different mastering buses, like just trial and error. I haven't really used too many videos or anything to figure out what to do, but it just got smaller and smaller, and now it's just a limiter. <laughs> that's true. That's funny. Although you can make a bad sound or a bad song sound good with mastering just by EQing and like maybe putting like stereo image on it. You can make a bad song sound good, but you can't make a good song sound that much better with mastering, in my opinion. I could open them. Um, I can open up a few things I'm working on right now. I was just working on this this morning. Anybody do the, I don't know how to pronounce it, but the Pomodoro? If it was Japanese, it would be Pomodoro. But I've been doing that lately, and it's pretty fun. It makes working a lot easier. Yep, that's the one. Tomato technique. <laughs> Yeah, it's you work for 25 minutes and take a five minute break and you do it four times, which is considered a cycle. But the cool thing is you, um, you decide exactly what you want to work on and what you want to get done in the 25 minutes. And then when you're finished working for 25 minutes, you put a check mark on a piece of paper. And it's really interesting what it does. It, I feel like when the timer goes off, and I'm supposed to stop working, I feel the urge not to stop. And I always make myself stop because I trust in it. <laughs> because I never feel the urge not to stop, usually. Usually I have the urge not to start. So I find it really helpful. <laughs> ah! So here's this thing I was working on this morning. I don't know how well it's gonna play with my current laptop heat, but. I've been working on this for a while, but I stopped working on it for month or something like that something stupid maybe it was only two weeks I know it's, not a problem yet. it's called instagram song because i came up with the idea just trying to make an instagram video of me like playing different parts into ableton but i ended up liking the idea too much so i'll have to wait to put up the instagram video I but i have like videos of me playing all the tracks for the first time it's kind of cool. I know it's not a problem yet. There's some vocal tracks missing. There we go. <laughs> this one features Hikari as well. I know it's not a problem yet. You show me. That's as far as I got. This one's fun for me. I love working on little details and just working second at a time, even though it's not really efficient way to do things. But here's what the instrumental sounds like. I think I took this idea from somebody's song that got played yesterday. There was this like, I forget what the style of the song was, but there was this like uh, bass note that kept coming in louder than the rest of the tracks and I liked it a lot, so. I'm gonna solo all these stuff, all this stuff that I'm, basically all the stuff that I'm working on programming slowly. Everything else is kind of looping around this stuff yeah my favorite feeling is to go out to a coffee shop and just work for like <laughs> order a banana at second cup and work for like five hours straight and just get like maybe this much done and then 
coming home after taking the bus and like completely forgetting what I made and just pressing play and listening to it for the first time and be like, oh my God, what did I do? How did I do this? This one's a lot simpler than usual. Usually I have like a bunch of random tracks coming in and out, but this one I'm trying to stick with the stuff that I have and just not outsource any more samples. <laughs> and I don't really know what the shuffle is of this song. So while I'm programming everything, I just drag it s slightly off. So all the shuffles are kind of different, but that sounds good. Here, let me take like 10 minutes and add some stuff to this. I'll show you how I have been doing it. So I had this stuff muted because it's distracting. I need more chords here, so I have all this stuff for dealing with the chords. Just a bunch of crappy guitar samples with clicks in them. Okay. major minor chords on here. This is from um, Bo for Face the Night. He sent me these recordings. All right, so I think I'll use some of this, but not too much. One thing that's um, that Ableton needs to add is the ability to add shuffle or like swing to the actual grid for a sample placement. It's so hard to work right now because Everything is really slow. going with this one. All right, so this one's really useful. This is the same sample stuff from Winter Sleep. Samples are all late, so I just drag them back until they're in time. I think it'd be cool to go back down to the E minor here for a second.
Mm. Yeah, I just released the instrumental just as something fun, but it definitely doesn't work that great as an instrumental. I think the chorus is okay, but even that, like somehow with all the stuff that's playing, it needs the vocals. But the one thing, the reason I wanted to release it was because so much work got covered by the vocals. You just need something to take center stage. For instance, like nothing's taking center stage in what I'm working on right now because I need the vocals. So everything just kind of bubbles along. But if I had just one synth on top of this, it could work as an instrumental. Let me find a good sound. I don't think I have any sounds on this. Like, now it can be an instrumental. Basically, you just need one thing that takes the attention. So if I played this, it wouldn't be working very well. Like, yeah, it needs to be like pretty out front, I think. But I kind of like <laughs> just playing stuff on top. I think it's been a 10 minutes. <laughs> I didn't really get very far. Yeah, this is from Streamer. And I just sampled the note instead of using the synth, but it ended up being better. <laughs> I tried replacing it with the synth that I made and all the notes are the wrong volume and stuff, so I just stuck with this. when I have a released sample and I can't cut it off. So I'll just replace this with some other sim, maybe in this track. this marimba It's 
so slow. I'm like making motions and then it updates afterwards. time for the best part which is the bass i mean it's not time for the bass it's just time <laughs> it is the time right now and i'm working on the bass i love how <laughs> everything gets naturally just ridiculously colorful and i have no control over it I tried to get the game capture working with my old laptop, um, but I couldn't get it to work right before the stream. I couldn't get the drivers to come up in OBS. Okay, I want to bend up. Oh, a tone here. I think that'd be fun. Maybe I'll start here and bend up. Oh my god. It should be an E here, but I think B might work just as like a weird bass line. Boom. Okay, what else do I got here? I have these weird samples. It's just from an acapella I have, and I've just been finding little bits of... The funny thing is, after I did the... Um, after I've been playing all, you, all your guys' music, I realize I'm not like... I don't really have much to teach anybody who's watching for the most part. It's kind of hilarious. Everyone who submitted stuff was like as good as I am, so. Maybe two octaves down with the bass. Well, okay. Um, maybe not this note, but... Two octaves down. Oh, two notes down. All of them? Okay, now I'll bring in some of these drums and call that finished for now. Yeah, 
that's how long it takes me basically to make a little part of it. But now I got it. So yeah, if I'm working in a coffee shop and it's really loud, I don't even know really what I'm doing. I was just in this like weird fighting with the sound noise and stuff. So. All right, that's that. <laughs> I'll save it. And yeah, this is probably the most fun I have working is when I'm doing stuff like this because it's just a bunch of like weird intuitive decisions that you really couldn't back up. Like you couldn't be like, I'm putting this note at E flat because, or like anything. It's all just kind of like, I don't know. I'm just doing it. Um, I have one song that's coming out soon and I'd say it's probably the simplest song I've ever done. It still sounds pretty complex, but I think there's only like 20 tracks or something. And here I'll open this one too. I'll show you this one and then I'll say goodnight. Oh my god. Why do I have two mics set up? I don't know. Um, yeah. I sent this one in the Discord. I was working on it too on the on Twitch. kind of worked on it this morning for like an hour but I made this yeah just trying to layer some samples on top of each other Um, <laughs> let's see where it's from is that's how big the sample is <laughs> it's just from um african guitar recording yeah <laughs> and then i just stretched out a small little part of it It's a piano song by Goldman. I just took some chords from it and stretched them out a lot. Yeah, just Ableton stretching. I don't know what I'm going to do with this part. Here's what the drums on top. Hmm. I was trying to make something special. I don't know. I don't know if I even trust the drums anymore with this. I might just kind of like go deeper with this and try and make something that's, I don't know, weird to listen to, like a weird effect. Because when I go back to this, it just sounds like um, I don't know, like a kid show or something. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's um, those are the two things I'm working on right now. K 
case you're wondering. I'll, um, I don't actually know what I'm going to do next stream, but that's on Tuesday at later time in the evening if you're in North America. All right, thanks for watching the first half and thanks for watching and sticking around for the second half as well. Um, I'll come up with something cool to do and I'll post it on Instagram about it. But until Tuesday, um, I don't know how to finish that sentence. All right, see you later. <laughs>